welcome to the Bear Sleuth Podcast, starring Batman and Super Rob. Today we're talking about um, Batman v Superman. Dawn of Criticism. Yep. Um, talking about some of the, the kind of main sticking points of the film, our views on it, and um, what we thought was good, what we thought was bad, and just general... Just general chit-chat. Talk. We yeah. probably won't even say what's good or bad, we'll just talk. Yep. And you can listen. Um, normally while doing something more productive. Like what? I don't know. <laughs> Peeling potatoes? Are we meant to be doing something more productive or... No, the reason we're having this discussion oh, yeah. is because we yeah. don't do anything productive. This counts. <laughs> this is working towards something. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm telling my parents. Anyway. <laughs> Three years of university for this? <laughs> You're in how much debt because of this? <laughs> so, we both saw the film. Separately. Separately. Um, I saw it, what did I say? I saw it Friday, and you saw it Saturday. Sunday. Sunday. Yes, okay. Sunday. Fair enough. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and we both saw the critical responses before we went in. And I don't think either of us think that it deserved anywhere near the amount of critical flack that it received. Well, actually, I just heard about it from you. Okay. <laughs> and I believed you because everyone said the same thing about Man of Steel. Because I was just like, Rob, have you heard? <laughs> Fucking everyone hates this. This. You heard? Film. What day is it? It's Christmas Day, sir. <laughs> That's what you reminded me of. Just There's still time. <laughs> There's still time. DC Universe can still be cooked. <laughs> I've seen the three ghosts of Ryan Reynolds, Christopher Nolan, and whatever the cast of uh, Return of Superman was. Superman Returns. I don't even remember who was Superman in that. Uh, Brandon Roof, Ralph, uh, the guy who played uh, the Atom in... Uh, Seriously? I think it was the Atom, wasn't it? Arrow. Yeah, yeah, so he got demoted from film duty to TV duty. He was also the um, Evil X number three in Scott Pilgrim, vegan one. Oh, basis. okay. Uh, you had Kate Bosworth as Lois Lane. Fr- I want to say Frank Langella as Kate. Uh, I was about to say Katy Perry <laughs> <laughs> as a as a Perry White. <laughs> um, as I think Lo- I think Lawrence Fishburne's a bit of a trade up. Kevin Spacey as Lex Luthor. Yeah, good casting on that one. And fucking, I want to say his name's J- James Marsden, who did Cyclops and X Men was. Miscellaneous dude number one. Jim uh, Olsen? Nah, like, oh, what was it? You've not seen it, have you? No. Well, I'm trying very hard to blag that I have seen it here. Okay, <laughs> well, he plays Harry White's, like, I know it by reputation. Or nephew, or some shit. Oh. Something okay. like that, like, it, We'll watch it. So, and Jimmy Olsen, then, basically? No, because Jimmy Olsen's in it, played by some guy. Some bird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what were we talking about again? Uh, oh, Dawn of Justice. Oh yeah, yeah. I enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was about to ask you to give like a, an eloquent review covering the entirety of your thoughts on Dawn of Justice. Should I just read you out my tweet? Go for it. Go Slash for it. the message I sent you. <laughs> Spoilers, by the way. We should warn you now. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably gonna put something on the video about that. Okay, that's good. I thought I'd say it anyway, because neither of us have been like... Spoiler alert! Did my review. Why are you that, me so that being said, I don't... This is kind of, this is again tangenting off, like, a little bit. But, um, I'm not so sure how much spoilers affect the viewing of the film. Because, like, so, so going into the film... Not really, but it's just kind of etiquette, I guess. Yeah. Like, if you're gonna... I know, if you overcook steak and you're giving it to someone, you're going to be like, oh, by the way, it's overcooked. Yeah, fair enough. Not that that is a really good analogy, I just couldn't think of anything good. Because <laughs> go, cause going into the film, um, a mutual friend of ours, kind of friend, more like sponge, <laughs> but uh, um, a, mu- a mutual friend of ours um, put up a, a, a review, like a, a, a review of who someone had gone to in the preview, and I liked it, and... And then he messaged me directly and was like, Oh my god! Spoilers! Can you, can you believe that Superman dies in this film? Spoilers. Uh, and it, at which point I was just like, Oh, 
that's probably a major plot point. But I've got to say, even you'd, go. You'd hope so. <laughs> you'd hope so, yeah. I've got to say, even going in with it, and it being such a major plot point, and why we both personally think that it was a good plot point, um, some critics disagree, it depends on, on your outlook, and we'll discuss that later. But um, I still thoroughly enjoyed it, and it didn't. I don't feel like it harmed my viewing of the film. Yeah. So if you did happen to stumble across this dick first, then, um, yeah, Superman dies, but you can probably still go and see the film. <laughs> Definitely. He dies at the end, just so you know. So that, uh, he, that you can definitely see the film. Yeah. <laughs> and, and rest assured, you will get your fix of Superman. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, what I thought of it... Sorry, I found my message like Go an for hour it. ago. <laughs> <coughs> Thank you. Can I, can I speak? Or? Yeah, you need to speak. I just watched a comic book film that felt like a comic book in every way, and isn't afraid to take risks. It took balls of steel. Ha! To tell the death of Superman. <laughs> I'm just imagining you like in front of a fire with like a robe on, yeah. smoking a pipe while you give that. Kind of close. Draped in a blanket on a sofa. Yeah, with a glass of coke. Fine, finest Coca-Cola. Yeah. Coca-Cola. 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 Yeah, what did you, uh, um, whatever your question was to me? My question to you was what you <laughs> thought of the film, but you, you, you gave that, so should yeah. I... Oh, oh, reversed, you bizarro, want... me give. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, it's good. Cool. Fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> um, give me that look. Without, like, going back through all my tweets or such, um, I think that... It was a film made for the comic fans, uh, and for it was made for people to sit and think about. And a lot of the issues in the film rely on context, subtext, and a little intertextuality from the comic books for you to fully grasp what's going on. I also I watched Man of Steel before going into it, and I think that aided me in kind of grasping some key plot points or just kind of background things that if you don't, if you haven't seen Man of Steel beforehand. Or if you haven't watched it quite recently, you might just miss or kind of misinterpret a bit. Like, um, I even saw some critics being like, where did that ship come come from in the beginning? You know, it's like slicing through. Because it, does, it doesn't, well, it doesn't quite look like Zod's ship, because Zod's ship was like a tripod thing. And then, but if you've watched the, um, if you watch Man of Steel, like a bit kind of breaks off and you see it going, you see that happen. Um... But yeah, I, I really enjoyed it, and the more I, the more I thought about certain points, I wrote a, a defence of the film, which you can check out on Bearsley dot com. Uh, go now, beat the rush, and yeah, yeah go uh, home now and beat your meat, or go home now and beat meat, and yeah, it's <laughs> sorry, uh, go home avoid the traffic, or you can stick around and beat your meat. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, yeah, uh, yeah, so. Um, yeah, good film. I just I think the more the more you think about certain points, um, the better they are. And a lot of points people are just dismissing straight off because they don't they don't really get it or they haven't thought of, thought a bit deeper into it. With that in mind, I'm trying. Probably the best place to start is Batman. Okay. Lots of people have been kicking up a shitstorm, including people with comments on my. On my article where I, I defend this, but people for some reason. Before we go into that, what did you think of Ben Affleck's performance? Because I've not. I mean, I. Okay. Yeah. Haven't read your article since like Friday, really, but or whenever it is you sent it to me. Yeah. But, and also I've not actually checked any critical, reviews or anything for the film, so I don't. I don't know if, you know, people are like, oh, I really like Ben Affleck, or if they're still just like, nah, Christian Bale. Um. For me, he was probably the best recreation of the comic book Batman, especially from the Frank Miller, um, Dark Knight Returns. I think he's got the chin. He has. He's de yeah. he definitely which, has the chin. Which for me is the most important part of being Batman. You need a strong chin. <laughs> I think um, again, like there's a there's a lot to read into his performance. Because he's quite he's quite cold and calculating as Batman should be and as Bruce Wayne should be, um, but he's definitely a man that's struggling, and 
that's something that, that we normally like when you see like Christopher Nolan's Batman, for instance, he always looks in control and like everything's going really well. Whereas and and he's doesn't matter what Heath Ledger Joker's gonna do, doesn't matter what uh, Tom Hardy Bane's gonna do, like Batman is gonna kind of regain some control and he's gotta have a plan and stuff. Whereas this Batman felt a lot more like he was losing his mind. losing it and fighting by the skin of his teeth and pulling out everything that he had to deal with a situation that was way out of his remit on really. No especially towards the end of the film. Yeah. Which brings me on to the point I was trying to get to before, which was the the gun controversy. <laughs> gun war. <laughs> <Sorry>. yeah. <laughs> Just the way we approached yeah, go on. Cause Basically, um, so so the problem that people have is that in the film, uh, in the nightmare sequence, Batman uh, uses guns to kill people. Um, in several of the chase sequences, Batman's vehicles are armed with guns. And in the final fight, towards the end of the film, when Batman goes to rescue um, Martha Kent, he nicks one of the henchmen's guns and uses it to fire upon other henchmen. Some people say that he only shoots to wound. Others seem to think that he's shooting to kill. I've only seen the film once. You've only seen the film mm-hmm. once, so I don't I, know. I would assume shoot to wound, because there's that the bit where the guy stabs him like, in the shoulder. Yeah. And he like kicks both guys away, and he grabs a knife, pins the guy to the wall, and sticks a knife in his shoulder. So I, I figured if that's the case, he's doing that shit with guns as well. He's probably just popping them in the arm and kneecap or some shit. Yeah, and not going for the face. Or... With the One bit I did like in the, uh, uh, the dream sequence, though, was like, the bit where he's like, he's on, he's on like his knees up like and shit, being beaten down. He just grabs that one guy and he's like, snaps his neck. <laughs> like just, just the whole like, because I think I can't remember if the music stopped at that point as well, and you just hear like the sound of people beating each other up. But like, you've got like all these people just surrounding Batman. He just grabs the nearest guy and you just hear like, <laughs> followed by Ben Affleck being like, <laughs> I love, I just loved it. Parademons. Fucking parademons. Para fucking demons. Omega symbol as well, so yeah. dark side. Dark seed. Fuck dark you. seed. It's not like fucking... West side. Spell side of. We brew the finest cosmic overlords. Dark seed beer. <laughs> <laughs> what are the parademons in that universe? Parademons. Parademons. <laughs> by Chanel. Chanel. <laughs> Hugo Boss Paradigma. <laughs> unleash, unleash it in a goblin. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, now I've just got um, Tobey Maguire Green Goblin. Yeah. Like, just the scene where you're in front of the mirror. It says it's just... We a, did it. Yeah, it says it's just an advert for Paradigma. No. <laughs> Paradigma. <laughs> but, um... One quick thing about Dark Sea or Dark Side. Yeah. They don't ever mention him. So which is again going to our comic book it's for comic book fans mm-hmm. as opposed to casual fans. I mean, yeah, fuck it. You can argue that um Marvel Clock in Avengers when it shows Thanos in the post credit scene. They didn't mention who it was then, but c- come the fuck on. <laughs> I knew it was Thanos, and the amount of people would come up to me and be like, "What was Hellboy at the end? It's like, oh my Christ. But like... Oh, for a little while, I was, I was just playing a game with like, trying to get like a bingo list of all the different <laughs> characters that people claimed it was. I only ever heard Hellboy. Oh, I got the thing. I genuinely had a guy at college right. come up to me and just be like, dude, why is the thing in space at the end of Avengers, and what's his beef with Hulk and all them? And I was like... You just oh. face into the never dimension. <laughs> but, um, I can't remember the point I was making. Yeah, but I mean, e- even then, he's not, ref- like, Thanos isn't referenced by name, it's just kind of, you're aware of his presence. Mm-hmm. Whereas, BBS, you get the Omega symbol. Beyond that, you don't really know shit. Like, I mean, at the end, you've got Lex being like, oh yeah, the bells have been rung, he is coming. Which I took as Dark Side as well. Yeah. But again, no one's like, Dark Side's coming. It's just, you see the Omega symbol in the future vision. And and what looks in the background to be a boom tube, maybe. Yeah, more um, than likely. Which is, go- which is <laughs> going to give frigging Kevin Smith, um, I don't know, like, shout out to him, not like we, we're really at the level where we can give shout outs, but... I will shout him out anyway, he's the reason I'm on this course. 
Yeah. Doing creative writing, by the way. And uh, and heading towards comics, like both of us want to head towards like being comic writers and stuff like that. So, uh, and Kevin Smith is a massive inspiration for both of us. If you've not checked out Kevin Smith, or you have no earthly idea who he is, Fat Man on Batman is the place to be. <laughs> Shame on you as well. Yeah. But, uh, check out Clerks, More Rats, Dogma. Fat Man on Batman. His pot, like yeah, just go to smartcast.com and just listen to everything. Yeah, you'll be there a, a couple of days, but it'll be a couple of years, I imagine, at this point. You reckon? Yeah, like everything's been on there for like fuck knows how long. Bloody hell! But yeah, um, <laughs> head o- head over there. He'll get you educated, sorted out, and <laughs> and his go back to school and get some knowledge. <laughs> But the one thing that he uh, he said when he was watching the trailers and he thought he saw Paradigms in the background was just like if there was a if there was fucking Paradigms, Boom Tube, Dark Side, we're in for some fun and that's really like to the comic book fans seeing all those those symbols like if you don't recognize the Omega symbol and all that and what that means, we're in for some good stuff in the next couple of years like some really cataclysmic huge battles like bigger than anything you've ever seen on in the superhero film world at least. I would say. Hopefully. Hopefully. Um, so Batman with guns. Like, yeah. getting back to this. Okay, yeah. So, so yes, yeah, so the argument is why he's using guns. His parents were murdered in front of him with guns. Why would he even ever pick up a gun? Why would he use one? Why would he fight with one? Do you want to take this? Um, he got over it. <laughs> Sorry. Um, no, I'd like Yeah, to... well, it's one answer. <laughs> Kind of disgust. I'm not counting the like the vision of the future. Yeah, okay. Because obvious, but um, it it I'll tell you one thing though. Like the gun, the guns did not bother me at all. The bit where he fucking like rams another car with a batmobile, shoots a tow cable at it, and then drags it along for about while it, while it's like cartwheeling yeah. through the air before it goes flying over like. Into a fucking wall. I think that bothered me more than the gun stuff. When I say I think, I mean I know it did. Um, what was the question again? Sorry, I keep forgetting. <laughs> Just uh, guns, so, yeah, so Batman guns. Um, yeah, we're looking. We're looking at an, a, a rather aged and seasoned Batman, like you know he's been brewing in a cask or something for like a while. Wine, whiskey. But, um, Fine oak and Batman. Yeah, so well, he's been around the block. It's mentioned that he's been around 20 years fighting crime. Weeds grow back, you know, the whole weed analogy thing. He pulls one out, like, no, fucking crime. Um, and then, yeah, like, the news report at the beginning, he's branding people with the bat symbol, criminals. And I can't remember if it was also the news bit where it was like, oh, like, the criminals get branded with the bat, then... They die you know, in prison. It's, like... it's pretty much a death sentence in prison. They die in prison. And it even mentions on that news thing that that's an unusual thing for Batman to do. So yeah. it's established that he's been around and that is out of character for him. So when you look at the facts where you've got yeah, everything I just said, <laughs> the, um, the Robin suit. Which yeah. I, I can't remember what it says. I have uh, how, how jokes on you. Yeah, that was it. So yeah, it, it kind of implies that he's lost a Robin. Yeah. <laughs> But I don't know why Chuck... Lost his dick. Yeah, long. But, um, <laughs> yeah, assuming that Robin's dead. He even mentions, you know, the whole, uh, you know, how many good guys have we lost, how many are left, how many have gone bad, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, how so many he, stayed that way. Yeah, and like, like we said as well, he, he witnessed the destruction caused by Superman and Zod. So, as far, I mean, none of Batman's rogues are on that level. On that level, either, so... I mean, if you go into the really crazy side, you've got stuff like Killer Croc and Clayface, but even then, they're not going to destroy a city. Yeah, so, consider all of that as well. Yeah. And like we said at the start, he's a, he's a much more desperate man fighting the skin of his teeth. So well, I almost feel like the nightmare vision that we saw was, if you think of it as like a sliding scale, mm. where like Brave and the Bold Batman is at one end, where he kind of quits villains to death. Well, not to death, but to like into submission. Then we've got the Batman that we that we get in the film, which is like he's ha- he's had to deal with all this stuff for so long that he's getting worn down. He's having to take more desperate measures, and then the nightmare Batman that we saw at the end was where where this road will lead. Like that that is what he'll, he'll become eventually, and that's what he'll have to become if the world keeps heading in this direction. That's why they've got to stop it. 
And I and I feel that this continues into um we're gonna talk a bit more about the death of Superman later. But uh one of the things that I want to talk about is that now that Batman's the one that's set at the Justice League in the wake of the death of Superman, um how he how the other members of the Justice League will also be going on down these darker paths to be able to defend the world from Darkseid, who is an apocalyptic level threat, like even his basic goons, the Parademons, each one of them can easily be a threat to the Justice League. Like they, they are a menacing threat. And then when you've got an army of them, like you really, everyone will be fighting by this, like the skin of their teeth to Maybe be in the you fight. You could probably say that Superman inspired him as well as in Batman. Because hmm. the bit where he's like shows up in Lex's cell and he's got like the burning brand ready and he's like. Uh, blah, 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 and then he just punches the wall and he just walks off. He's like, yeah, I'll be washing you. I, then, think, I think that might be a redemption, even. Yeah, that's kind of what, that's what I meant. <laughs> yeah. Like, like um, he's got to step up. Yeah. Step up and two. Then, like, yeah, he's with Diana Prince being like, oh, we need to blah, blah, blah. We're putting a band together. We're getting the band back together. We're forming a team. Yeah. Who's we? Dun! <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah. Some kind of league, maybe. Little move. <laughs> the League of Justice. The League of Super Friends. <laughs> um, okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is Lex. Actually, no, no. I think leave Lex for a minute. Superman, because we've done Batman. Do the other side of the coin. Greatest Gladiator match. Gladiator match. We've done the Black Corner, Gotham. Let's go over to the uh, the blue and red. Corner of Soups. What did you think of Henry Cavill? Cavill. I personally like him. Jersey boy. I like him very much. He has nice teeth. Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, I think. I mean, again, like, like I mentioned about it being a comic book film that fell like a comic book. That that scene where he's um holding. Oh fuck! What is it? The rocket. Yeah, and like, fucking hell, his biceps. Boom! Yeah. Jesus Christ. Like, like, you look at mine, right, and then like, multiply it by my five. <laughs> then shove some cinder blocks in there as yeah, well. Yeah, like, Jesus Christ. He is a hench guy. He is fucking shredded. Like, fucking hell. But, um, yeah, I mean, if you look at every other live action Superman, no one's got that physique and... I mean, you look at the comic books, and really that, that physique is something you can't really get at all because it's usually out of proportion because of an artist. But you know what I'm get, going for, right? Yeah, no, like, it's it's that sort of larger-than-life physique and somehow he's he's attained it. Like, it's... I mean, I mean I, it's, I f- it's perfect for the role. He's like, not, he's... Like, my problem with... I mean, don't get me wrong, I loved the Richard Donner Superman films with Christopher Reeve. I loved... I even like Brandon Roof. I love Superman Returns. I've always loved it. Mm. And but my problem with both of those guys in the role is they don't look physically imposing. And I know that's not really a huge aspect of the character, I guess. But Henry Cavill, I want him on my side in a bar fight. No, it's it, even like Lex. Like you don't want to pick a fight with him. Mm. Like no matter how you feel about that line, it's like Christ. He did like just. When is it? Like, when he saves Lois Lane at the beginning, and, like, she takes her arm off the dude, just the face he pulls, where he's like... Rob is grimacing at me. Yeah, I'm... Sexually. Yeah. Not sexually, no. Damn, but then I he, misread like, it. Then he puts the guy, <laughs> he, like, charges the guy for about four or five walls. Yeah. He's good for... He's probably the perfect look for the... At least of this generation, like, going back... I, I mean... I mean, you already covered this, but going back to like the Christopher Reeves one, that that was the right Superman for that generation. For this generation, Henry, Henry Cavill is our guy, and I think that uh, Ben Affleck matches him well. Agreed. They played well off each other as well. Yeah. Even though you could say they didn't have much screen time together until like the last hour, <laughs> but still, I like every moment with where they were together, even if they were just glaring at each other or something stupid. They had a good George. chemistry. Like he was Agreed. the Boy Scout and. Um, Batman had the, the kind of the down and gritty look, and a little montage bit where it's showing like 
as if it was a motion conference with a news report being like, oh, blah, 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 do we need Superman? And he's like, you know, the rocket thing, saving the, the bit where he's saving people from the flood. Yeah. And there's just the sign in the background, you just kind of see a silhouette, and the woman's like, raising her arm towards the, it. The, like, the messianic. Yeah. Like, like, just, oh, just oh, 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 look like all-star Superman. Oh, it, was, it was beautiful to me, like. Oh, shit, I'm impressed. I mean, say what you will about Zack Snyder, but he can he can make a good, like, image. He can. Just that, those those moments are what but, makes but, a Zack Snyder film. Like, I have nothing bad to say about Zack Snyder. Like, every film I've seen by him, I've enjoyed. Even that one with the owls. Like, that was weird. <laughs> I mean, it was weird, but I enjoyed it. The Last Guardians? I, Guardian? Guardians? Something like that. Yeah. I remember enjoying it. I remember being like, this is a bit weird. Like, I felt like I was tripping balls the whole time, the whole film. But it was really good. <laughs> Don't they have, like, they have armour and stuff? Yeah, like, that's what Like, they're warriors? Yeah. It's, it sounds stupid. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was pretty good. But, no, like, people are like, oh, yeah, you can't direct, save, like, save his life, you can't tell a story. You're all wrong. I mean, I at least understood what was going on in the film. I think... He does. He does this. He does this thing where he like he likes to really play with the themes, mm. and he and he likes to look for something deeper. And the problem is, is that he gets put on these big budget like popcorn chewing films, and instead of being like the Coen Brothers or like Tarantino or something like that, where it's expected going in that you're gonna have to look out for these sort of themes, you're gonna have to analyze it as you go along. People go in and they just expect it to wash over them. Um, and I think this is why a lot of people who are used to the current wave of superhero films a la Marvel are finding it difficult to watch Batman v Superman because it's a thinker it, it is one where you've got to you've got to analyse things that are going on I mean um, a classic example going over to Lex to like Lex Luthor stuff with the um, Batman gets the hard drive that's got the superheroes vigilantes on and he looking through the hard drive and that's kind of what sets him on his course to fighting uh, Superman and getting kryptonite and building up the Batman v Superman kind of final fight it's never directly said that Lex Luthor wanted Batman to have that drive, but if you if you start to look at like his reactions to when Batman breaks in, if you start to look at um, how Lex reacts later in the film, it's all part of his plan, and his motivations behind his plan. Lots of people have said that they can't fi- follow Lex's motivations because uh, we've got like he talks about God, he talks about his father, I he don't talks think about. Meant to follow. Like, that easily with Lex. Yeah. Because, I mean, like like I said, like, he's... I found him really good at playing someone unstable. Like, yeah. he came across as, like, a fucking lunatic. <laughs> like, if I had kids, I would not let him babysit my kids. The, the scene where there's, like, the state senator and he pops the uh, the Tootsie Roll over yeah. his, into his mouth. Like, he, he is unnerving. He is unsettling. Yeah. Like, I mean, if, if, if that interpretation of Lex was a real character... And you invited him over right now, and he was sat in that chair. I would, and and you left the room. I would fear for my life. Like you, you would be gone like thirty seconds, and I'd be like, "Please, God, don't touch me." <laughs> right? Maybe not that. It's like inviting Max Landis over for dinner. That's harsh. It's true. I've never met him. From what I've seen, from oh. what I've seen of Mr. Landis, I feel like him and him and uh, crazy Jesse Eisenberg, Lex Lisa would go on quite well. I have a point to say, but I'm not saying it on here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, check out uh, American Alien, Superman American Alien by Max yeah. Landis. Like, if, you, if, you, if you're not convinced Superman's a good character for some really stupid reason, then just go read that. Like, That's good. Numbers. It's, it's a seven-part miniseries. We're up and, to five at the moment. Yeah, one to five are out now. So buy it, read it now. Like, right this second, now. <laughs> right now, as we're on here, get your ass over to ForbiddenPlanet.com or whatever your preferred comic book site is. Just fuck it. Anywhere. Anywhere. Just buy it. Buy it. I will give it to you. I mean, <laughs> that I That is want, not something you want out on I the mean, internet, bro. I, I will give you one person a copy of... All, I, I'd lend it to someone. <laughs> if... if this is just, uh, again, like a little tangent, but if you were going to recommend one issue in particular, because each issue is an independent story about Superman and his kind of, his growing up, which one would you go for? Uh, number four? Is that the one where Batman appears? Yeah. Yeah, number four, or maybe number five. For the sake of, um, 
the film Batman vs Superman, I'd probably pick the fifth one because it, it kind of explores the relationship between him and Lex a bit. Yeah, and that's really intriguing. I, w- I would actually go with number three where, um, without spoiling too much, basically Superman pretends to be um, Bruce Wayne for the night. And it's really, it's really interesting because without having Bruce Wayne in any way turn up in the comic, I think I well actually I think there's like a little scene right at the end where he's with Razzle Ghoul training, and he sees um he sees this, but without having Bruce Wayne turn up, you get so much of Bruce Wayne's character and Clark Kent's character reflected back at you, mm-hmm. and I, that to me was just it's just really interesting and kind of intriguing, um in general. But going back to Lex. Um, just quickly, I think, I, I think, uh, my personal theory on his, his psychiatric, uh, psychiatric state, first is that he makes illogical leaps, so it's not, he, he's not all in one piece, but he was abused by his father, we know this, and so any father figure terrifies him, and any, any point where he is in a position where people can judge him like his father terrifies him. He sees Superman as a father, he sees God as a father figure, um, and he now sees uh, Dark Side as a possible abusive father figure for the entirety of the human race. And I think in all of these cases, he doesn't want the human race to be abused by a higher power in the same way that he was abused by his father. And this is why he's running scared and coming up with all these illogical plans because it's a genius mind acting out in fear in the same way that Batman is going to more desperate measures Lex is going to his most desperate measures in this film but you can't get this from just you don't get this just in the course of the film you have to go and sit and think about these other things I guess I mean what do you make of that theory pretty much what you just said so you you think it holds holds water (laughs) yeah put it simply (laughs) (laughs) okay um Wonder Woman, your thoughts? Yeah, I liked it. I liked her. She was, I could believe that uh, she would kick my ass. That's probably worded badly. She would kick my ass. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I, to be honest, I didn't really doubt it anyway. Like when I saw the first image, you know, the promotional image where she's in the armor and shit, that won me over instantly. Before then, I'd not seen anything else with her in, so I can't really judge. But, no, I enjoyed it. The scenes where she's just mincing around in a dress as, Di- as uh, Diana Prince, I enjoyed. When she rocks up in Wonder Woman mode, she kicked ass and had a very nice theme. I've seen some critics claim that she dresses too nicely for an Amazonian warrior. Well... What would you say to that? It's a comic book film. <laughs> you have a man dressing up as a bat, for fuck's sake. Come on. <laughs> why would anyone in their right mind do that yes father I will become a bat <laughs> <laughs> um, again I've not checked any of this criticism out no 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 um, it wasn't like the scenes where she was fighting it was the scenes where she like rocked up to Lex Luthor's ball Ball. you probably should have said that at first yeah I know <laughs> I realised that I phrased the question um well, she's dressed for the occasion. Well, it's not like it's a normal day out that she's wearing like a you know dress like that. I it's I, I her garb on the plane was a pretty straightforward woman businesswoman businesswoman person woman of business. You know what I'm going for? Yeah, I know. But she's not wearing a skimpy dress or anything there. So I mean, come on, what do you expect her to wear at an event like that? I. I don't know. I mean, I know. I know that the reason before in the comments for why she has like more skimpy battle armor is that she finds it empowering in her femininity, and maybe that's that's also with the with the ball gowns and stuff is that she's reveling in her femininity, which because um, as woman as woman woman is such a symbol for fe- female empowerment. So I guess. That's... Did you like the bit when Lex was like, "Oh yeah," and Zeus gave him the lightning bolt, and then just Wonder Woman's in the crowd is like. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> she, just to be clear, she didn't make that noise. I did that because you can't see my face. But <laughs> that noise just properly like summed it up. <laughs> no, that cracked me up though. But... Oh man. But yeah, I, I think she was good. Um some people 
seem to be disappointed that she didn't get as much screen time as the other two. As the other two. Well, I mean, all I can really say there is it's called Batman v Superman. <laughs> Not Batman v Superman but, v Wonder Woman or whatever. No, I, mean, I mean, given the fact she was a supporting role, yeah. I thought it was fine. I, I think if this was a comic book series, she'd be like a guest star. Whereas it probably would have happened exactly how it did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but now, like, uh, I what I except say. Jeff Johns would have wrote it. Yeah, probably. I'd be fine with it. Yeah. Sure, have you have you seen the thing where um, I think it was Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck mentioned him and Jeff Johns are working on something together. No, that's cool. I don't know if that's actually an official thing or if I just skimmed through on Reddit. But oh, we'll have to have to look into that after the after the show. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I think a lot of people are pining for it being a uh, Batman solo. Well, isn't isn't that the one where it's like Ben Affleck the movie where he's doing like the writing, directing, producing, starring as Batman, and probably being the love interest as well? Um, Hello, Bruce Wayne. Hello, Bruce Wayne. I'd watch it too. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking like Rimmer World. Probably, probably the film where he changes his name to Ben. <laughs> it's Ben Wayne now. <laughs> uh, I, um, yeah, Wonder Woman was good. Don't give a shit what you say. Think, feel. This isn't coming directly from me. This is just from like I know. what limited research I, I, I did through like I, 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 Rotten I, I, Tomatoes I and shit. I will also make it clear that I know that this isn't going to be for everyone. I'm not an arsehole. Yeah. Usually. The what, the film or? Oh, the film. Yeah. I <laughs> you thought about the podcast. <laughs> I think I mean that too, I guess, but Yeah. I think the the film is definitely for the comic fans. More, More. so than casual viewers. Yeah. Like I mean I, I know that when I watched Man of Steel, I watched it with my friend who's like his favourite superhero is Superman and he was sat there like, This is the greatest thing I'd ever seen. Mm-hmm. Like, to him it was like watching I don't know, an adaptation of the Bible, I imagine. But um, <laughs> one of those things that no, that normal I people like. Think of another example. But uh, yeah, and I watched it with my dad, and my dad enjoyed it more than he thought he would. Mm. But he again, he was a bit like, "What's what? Like, what, what are they referring <laughs> to? Like, what would he just mentioned this? What's that?" And I'd be like, "Oh, blah 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 blah." Yeah. And he'd be like, oh, okay. I mean, um, the um, the couple of people that I've had that I've I've been like, who was that guy that that Batman saw in his dream, like when Flash is coming out the portal and stuff? Because in le- unless you, that's not even a typical costume for Flash. Like he's kind of armored up and and stuff. Like it, unless you're like, you're a comic book fan and you've seen stuff like I mean, it was mostly the Injustice Flash, if anything. Yeah, I agree. Um. But then, like, but if you've never seen Flash before, and it's not the the bar the Barry Allen that we've seen in the the CW TV series, so it's a completely different costume as well. Yeah. Like, then no, then everyone's just like, huh? Who the fuck was that? <laughs> <laughs> Who is this guy? Um. So yeah, I I think there's a lot that relies on you to. I wouldn't say you need in massively in depth knowledge, just probably to have read like a couple of the New Fifty Two books, like a New Fifty Two Justice League. Even been a fan of the Justice League cartoon as a kid. Would yeah, probably would probably, or played Injustice, maybe, Me, yeah. would, would carry you through at least a bit and done a bit of Googling, um, but I think you need to go in armed with a, with a little bit of knowledge. This is the first time, actually, that I can ever think of where all those news articles that spring up, like whenever, whenever we get a character announcement, like when we got fucking Black Panther, and then every single site I went to was like, who is Black Panther? The top 10 Black Panther stories. Did you uh, did you know that Black Panther was once T'Challa and like <laughs> all these different things about Black Panther that will never be drawn in the films because most people aren't going to get it. This is the first time when you need some of that information going in, like you need to be armed and ready. I think it's. I lost my train of thought, but I'll just say something completely different. Okay, that's I cool. think it's mainly throwing out questions that are expected to be answered later on. Yeah. Which is probably a really obvious thing to say. <laughs> but <laughs> given the fact that like a few people have been like, Yeah, but like what? Like they just question mark everywhere about the film and I'm just kind of like 
<laughs> read, the ne- read the next issue. Yeah. Well, it, it yeah, it, it plays like a comic book. More so than than anything else. Any other franchise, in my opinion, to date. And and a pro- like most comic book series, if you're not if you're not a comic book viewer, tend to rely on you to go out and find the other issues, and mm. it basically gets to a point, and I've been suckered by this so badly, as Rob will attest to, in the amount of comics I've got, where you need to be reading everything that a comic company is, is putting out at once for you to get the entire full story of like every little morsel of piece of background information. Um, oh, I, I just, uh, um, a great example of that, actually. Standoff, which is the big Avengers time thing going on mm-hmm. at the moment. In what in the background of one of the scenes, you see a dog turn to this massive, like super monster of death. Not never talked about again. If you go and read Howling Commandos issue six, that that dog turning to that massive thing has his whole arc, <laughs> like this huge arc. If they did something like that in the film, in like a film, people would go insane. <laughs> <laughs> shit, like, sorry, like, no, no, no one's like lost their minds about this shit. But like, Jeffrey Dean Morgan as Thomas Wayne. I, I want, I want Flashpoint. I want him. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 you didn't let me finish. I wasn't meant to pause there. I paused because I was like, I want. I didn't want to say I want Flashpoint. I wanted to say I want him as Batman. And then I was like, should I say as Batman or under the cowl? But I stopped at a really awkward moment. <laughs> <laughs> I want him inside the cow. The cow. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, that'll do. <laughs> yeah, like that would be friggin' awesome. I want him in leather. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that. yeah. Yeah, he um Oh god, I can get I know it would just be like more of the comedian in a way. But how beautiful would it be? Uh, Flashpoint, just quickly, um, is an alternate universe uh, that Flash goes into um, in a DC crossover kind of crisis event book. Um, and one of the, the main key points of the universe is that um, in the Wayne murders, it was Bruce and Martha Wayne that were killed. And no, Thomas Bruce. Wayne... Is it just... Oh, yeah, yeah, because Martha becomes Joker, didn't she? Yeah. Yeah, so Bru- Bruce was shot and Martha and Thomas survive. Do I even know comics? <laughs> Jeez, do you even know what you're talking about? <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> no. Um, but yeah, uh, but Thomas Wayne survives and goes on to become his own form of the Batman, a harsher Batman. One of the key things about his character is that he uses guns. Yeah. I remember that, which is something that Bruce doesn't in the comics for the majority of the time. I know. I know already that there was someone on like a Reddit forum being like, I'll tell you. But, uh, <laughs> did you ever see that like fan theory where Ben Affleck's Batman was meant to like, someone was like, oh yeah. Link to no one's. Yeah. Like, they tried it, yeah. to link it to that and they were like, oh yeah, but because Ben Affleck's Batman, like what if he's not Bruce Wayne, he's actually like Slade Wilson. <laughs> and they went into like great lengths being like, this is the reason why. And this was like, this was like when the first trailer came out as well. Yeah. It was like, Jesus Christ. That's because people wanted to, like, hammer the Chris Nolan things in somehow. I, I, I'm not going to discuss the Chris Nolan films here because... We'll be going for another hour. So, moving on. Uh, Before we do anything else, like everything we've ever, ever discussed, do you think that Batman v Superman colon Dawn of Justice should have been two films? Oh, so we had one film which was Batman v Superman, and another film Dawn of Justice. Huh? Huh? Not so crazy now, am I? <laughs> I think we should have had a DC Universe Phase One, to be honest. That ended in Dawn of Justice. Well, while don't you know that? <laughs> while <laughs> the look that that they can't see. Yeah, why don't they copy Marvel one hundred percent? Dribble a bit. <laughs> <laughs> and that's fine. Like if you think like the film's there was, up. there was a lot that, that that the film was trying to cover, and, and like I mean, as we've said, there's like comic book fans. It paid off well for us, but 
for the average Joe, <laughs> as it were, <laughs> like a phase one might like like no no one in that cinema screen knew Wonder Woman's origin story. That's why we're getting a Wonder Woman film next year. I know, <laughs> but don't have it. But partly, partly feels like don't have a turn up if no one's gonna know like what her shizness is. You know. I don't know because I'm not an average Joe. I was, like I, I see where you're coming from, and I was about to say, I guess the the core members of Justice League, like the average Joe is more familiar with. And then I thought. Actually, no, that's just me. Yeah, go out, and, <laughs> go out and find someone who can tell you like, like Aquaman's I mean, fucking story. Yeah, that's why I thought Who's myself, Mera? But, but like, I figured Batman and Superman, you can get away with that shit. Yeah. But, I don't know. I don't really care about it. I mean, I'm sure there's going to be people out there who are like, was she like Captain America? Because she was in the World Wars. So right, so she's like a super, super soldier, right? Right? <laughs> I think we're fraught. <laughs> but um Okay, ignore all that bullshit. Right. Should it have been split into two films? Yeah. Not necessarily split it into two films. Well yeah, fuck it. Split into two films. Right, what would what would what would part A have in it and what would part B have in it? That's a very good question. I have no idea. Because I'm just seeing everything up to the Batman Superman fight. And the bit where Batman doesn't kill Superman. I suppose that'd be more of a risky move, wouldn't it? Yeah. To have it just end with to be continued or some shit like that. And then Dawn of Justice would be what? Just everyone jumping on Doomsday? I don't know, like... Although we'd actually get a bit more of the other Justice League members than... I'm, I'm sure you could find a way, like, they could have been, it could have been done in a way that... I don't know, like... Because, I mean, you'd have two films to, like, kind of, not fill out, but... Have more of that exposition. I suppose. Make it easier for the average Joe. Yeah, why not? Have everything <laughs> just spell out for them. <laughs> the plebeians. Yeah, why sure. not? Sure. But, yeah, like... Well, I, I had an argument for this, like, <laughs> six hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking of writing it down, but I couldn't find a pen at the time. <laughs> or paper. And then I did something else. <laughs> I think I started playing Arkham Knight or some shit. Okay. Not that's any relevant. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't confuse the people, Rob. The people might think that by mentioning Arkham Knight. Shut up, Pat. <laughs> or I kill you. Um, with a gun. <laughs> okay, jumping over to... You will just gloss over my question for now because I've lost my train of thought. I was trying to gloss over, but you drew attention to the gloss. Yeah, I know. We're now staring at the, gro at the gloss. <laughs> You're staring at me. You're the gloss! <laughs> you know what? <laughs> you. Spin on it. <laughs> Swivel on it, buster. Bring no, it. But like, I mean, have right, just, okay, just, just fuck it. Two films. Dawn of Justice could have been more of a prelude, fucking Justice League film, like the like. Yeah. Spend that focusing more on fucking metahuman files. Maybe I don't know. The metahuman files. Yeah. The David de Klaas. What do you think the other <laughs> files were on that hard drive? Because they clear, like plastic man. Just in, just like. Images instead, <laughs> just like a, a picture, like the same, like the video just cut into a little like <laughs> images. Oh god, one's just like Lex Luthor's secret triple X file of just all like the women's toilets in LexCorp. We find if like Lex just trolled everyone and it was like, this is where I'm gonna hide my porn stash. <laughs> Like, the amount of encryption as well, it's got to be like... Flash's code for midget porn. Yeah, like... <laughs> okay. <laughs> that, that's politically correct, right? Why are you asking me? Because you're the only other person in the room, and I obviously don't know what's politically correct. Nor do I, really. I mean... Dwarf, dwarf porn? 
can we just stop? No, can, we just, can we stop? S- small Shorten up. <laughs> Shorter, pe- vertically challenged porn? So Doomsday <laughs> was in the film. <laughs> yes, yes he was, Rob. What were your thoughts there? Riddle me this, Pat. <laughs> um, so one of, one of the things that came up a lot um, in people when they watched trailers and stuff was talking about comparing Doomsday to like the cave troll in Lord of the Rings or like saying that the CGI was really sucky. Um, I think it's important to, to kind of point out that the CGI was unfinished at that point and also Doomsday evolves throughout the, the fight scenes. So the way he is when he first gestates and is birthed that's really weird um, is not how he is by like 10 minutes later in the fight and you can see this like the scaling changes all the way through the fight Doomsday is like this constantly evolving mass of just he like any threat he just combats immediately and becomes whatever he needs to to, to fight it like Superman is throwing all this force to take him up out of um, Metropolis in Gotham kind of area <laughs> Sorry, like, do you know how people complained about the sheer destruction of Metropolis? Yeah. By the Man of Steel. Why did you did you at least pick up on that? They. Oh, when they're like, when they're like Whoa, he's, take, like, he's taking him out the sea. Where? Space. <laughs> and then like with the little line, they're like, we're taking him here. Why? It's uninhabited. <laughs> when he went to when he went to um, even even when he was in Metropolis, he was like, it's a it, uh, there was like a news report. He was like, it's a great thing that the working day is finished, so most people have left the area. And, um, like, when they went to the dock area, it was like, yeah, this is the part of Gotham that no one goes to. <laughs> There's just, like, the Riddler, just big explosion, and then we just get the, the typical, like, old man in a bath, like, falling out of a building, <laughs> but it's just the Riddler, and he's just like, riddle me this! What's wrinkly and shriveled and in a bath? It's me! <laughs> Played by the Dean from Community. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> That's gotta be a thing now. But, yeah, like... One thing I did like is just, I don't know, like, just... Jeffrey! I, I, I was quite surprised because I thought they'd balls up Doomsday, but they made it really... Impactful. Faithful. I yeah, guess. a pretty good recreation. I, mean, I don't know if you've read any of that. The only, the only kind of rough knowledge of Doomsday I have is the New 52 Doomsday, and I know that, that's, that takes a lot of liberties and changes it. Didn't know that was a thing. But... It's it's a virus huh. in New 52 where like. Well, you can tell me about it another. Okay. But um. <laughs> <laughs> but when when I got into comic books, like I've told you about my stepdad's like treasure chest full of like comic books ranging from like the seventies to at that time the present, which was like two thousand one. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But like he's got all the key issues of like Death of Superman, Return of Superman, but, like the shit in between where you've got like the Rise of the Superman, like Steel. Yeah, that one that I can't remember, Superboy, and the one that was like the cyborg. Cyborg Superman. Yeah, who turned out to be some other dude or some shit. Can't He's uh, Supergirl's dad now, I think. Or at least that's what they're doing with the new Rebirth. That's weird. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, what I was getting out of Doomsday is that he, he powered through the entire Justice League. And then, like, so he was evolving before he even faced Superman. And yeah. Then, then he went super insane. They had like the crazy Dragon Ball like thing where like they both died at the same time because they punched each other at the same time too hard or some stupid <laughs> shit like that. <laughs> like, <laughs> like proper like you know that scene, those scenes in Dragon Ball Z where like they punch each other in the face at the same time. They're both like, Ugh. yeah. It, apparently it was just that. <laughs> <laughs> so so Doomsday we both think was done well. Do you think it came too early in the in um, the, the grand chronology of the DCU? I, DCCU? I mean, DCU? Personally, I wouldn't have touched Doomsday at all, really. I mean, if I if I was in charge of doing the film adaptations, mm-hmm. writing them, blah, 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 I, I probably, if I had to pick a villain aside from Lex, I probably would have gone with Brainiac. Because, I mean, if you, if you think, like, I know just the ship has its own, like, artificial intelligence and sp- Shit, like, we're not artificial intelligence, you know what I mean? Yeah, but I know, like, Brainiac, I reckon they could have also pulled that off somehow. Could have swung it, yeah. Like, the Kallax, was it the little like robot thing from Hmm. Man of Steel could have then started to head towards Brainiac, kind of. 
Yeah, I can see that. I would love them to just do something crazy like Grodd. Yeah. <laughs> a monkey got into the ship! Oh no! <laughs> but, no, I mean, all things considered, I thought Doomsday was handled really well. Yeah. And so was the treatment of uh, Death of Superman, which I did not expect. I mean, even with Doomsday being there, like, naturally... I mean, with it being, like, so early on as well, yeah. I was like, they're not going to kill him off. They're not going to kill Superman. They, they can't do that. Even though, like, Doomsday is, like, you know, known for being... The one who, the one who did it. Mm. Yeah. The one who slayed Superman. <laughs> with, with his mighty... Don't. No. <laughs> yeah, like... Yeah. So I, I didn't expect Superman to die. But I'm I, without sounding morbid. I'm glad he did. Like, I'm glad. I'm glad. Like Doomsday killed him. How? How so? Because I wouldn't want it any other way. Like I'd be if Doomsday appeared, didn't kill Superman. They just kind of rushed him off and killed him, and that was that. Yeah. Then I would have been like I. I would have left a similar thinking. <sighs> well, it was good up until then. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Um... One of the, one of the things that this isn't really a, a review criticism. It's just one that I've heard like people in the cinema being like, "Why did he, why didn't Superman let Wonder Woman have the Kryptonite spare or Batman?" Mm-hmm. Um, like Batman can get close enough at that point. Really. <laughs> Batman is just like at that point he is just like <laughs> running did, around. Did, 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 did you like, like that scene where like it shows like Superman flying into Doomsday, Wonder Woman like behind him like slashing the back of his legs, and just Batman has just stood there like watching for a moment. Does he does he attack Doomsday with anything? I know he loads up the Kryptonite kind of stuff, but I didn't actually see him fire it. I'm sure he did. I can't remember. I know he goes in with the Batwing. That's probably the closest. I know he spends some time evading Doomsday, (laughs) which is probably the best he can do at that point, isn't it? Oh, God. It's just like, I don't know, Spider-Man against Thanos. Pretty much. You're not going to do much. Yeah, just sit back and watch. Yeah. Um, Oh, and the last two of Truth just kind of appeared. Like, Wonder Woman just, like, with the last... Oh, right, yeah, last yeah. Thing. Sorry, I thought you said the lightsaber of truth, and I was like... Yeah. That's how he found out that, that uh, Vader was his father. Yeah. The glow of the lightsaber it compels me. <laughs> um, yeah. So, moving on even further, Justice League. Justice League. Is that, is that the Justice well, League? No. Um, also, the... Um, Real quick on the death of Superman, the coffin memorial thing. Yeah. Had the uh, it was black coffin with a white symbol. Like, yeah, yeah, I love that. Resemble the costume that he wears when he returns. Like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my! Good heavens! And, oh, oh, the vapors! <laughs> the vapors! <laughs> yeah, uh, whatever it is you just say. Um, I do think that not that this should ever be a competition, but if Marvel are going for a better death, like a better funeral. Um, and I, d- I mean no one knows what's going to happen in Civil War or like if they do I don't um, and if anyone's going to die if Cap does kind of faithfully follow the comics and Cap does get killed off um, which I think will still be unlikely but there you go I don't know how they're going to top that death sequence it was it was really well done like the funeral and the, the death itself was heroic but the funeral was like I thought was really really well done um like the marching through the streets and then everything. Anyway, Justice League. Yep. Uh, from what from the little bits that we've seen, like we've seen uh, in this film now, like a bit of Cyborg, we've seen a bit of Flash, uh, we've seen a bit of um, Wonder Woman, we've seen a bit of Aquaman. How do you feel about Justice League? How do you feel about the future of the DCCU? I'm fine. <laughs> like that. There's not much I can really say. At this point, anything you're hopeful for? I mean, given given the not really, like, I mean, given the glimpses of the other members that we saw, just in like those little cameos, I was happy, hyped, yeah, impressed. Like, I mean, I wasn't on board for whoever it is playing uh, the Flash, like when they cast him. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure who. You... From the um, like footage in that little video and the bit where he appears in the dream thing sequence, I was like. Yeah. Yeah, I can I can dig it. I thought Cyborg looked really cool as Agreed. well. And 
I'm guessing that that box was our first glimpse of like a mother box. Yeah, that's kind of set up. That's what I assumed. Yeah, um, and again, that, that was really cool and a bit different. Um, Jason Momoa Aquaman looks... He's making Aquaman cool doing... He like, looks like he's going to fuck shit up. He really does. I'm, I'm still I'm putting bets on him and Wonder Woman having a fight early on, which would, which is just going to be beautiful. Like. <laughs> I would have loved for him just to like, jump out of the well with that kryptonite spear and just kill Doomsday. <laughs> <laughs> and then just walk off. He just looks at the rest of them just like... Just nods, he's like, you're right, fuck's off. See you guys. Have, have you uh, have you read Just the Origins, the like the first one of yeah, the like, Justice League? Yeah, I got it last year off you. Oh, I completely forgot. No, I didn't. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> oh yeah, I got it for your birthday, didn't I? Yeah, my 24th, almost a year ago. Oh, Rob's old. Thanks. I enjoyed it. Yeah, <laughs> and, and but the, the, the moment you know, where he turns up, and it's like, what can you do to the te- uh, What can you bring to the team? A bunch of power demons just like swoop in, and Aquaman just brings up this wall of sharks, yeah. basically, <laughs> and just destroys like a whole swathe of power demons. Oh, it's so cool! Um, again, another good one to read. Probably a really good prep for the film because I'm assuming that we're going to get something very similar. Yeah, actually, I mean the way things are, it's it's all it's all heading towards that um, More important origin thing. storyline. Yeah. I, Again, sorry, again, Superman's death is just posing an interesting thing for my thought okay. pro stuff. Um, like the, the, de- the, the details of his resurrection in the comics was really fucking vague. <laughs> like he just kind of appears and they're like, yeah, this and then this and then this and that, and now I'm here. And it's kind of like, wait, what? But I just remember, like, I mean, this is, I'm basing this mostly off uh, the New 52 Justice League Origins, where. Am I right in thinking Superman's like abducted briefly and taken to? Yes, like, and Batman's sent to rescue him. Yeah, Batman dies and he's like, yeah, no problem. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll save stealth him. in there. I'll, I'll, I will, being the new normal human being with no powers, I am go here and bring back you know Superman. <laughs> <laughs> but um, go to the the dimensional planet of Apocalypse where <laughs> I'm pretty sure like the heat of the planet is meant to sear the skin from your bones. Mm-hmm. But Batman's fine. I just heard before, it doesn't... I might have just imagine this. I might be confusing it with some other like major villain creature yeah. being. But can Darkseid resurrect the dead, or did I just make that up? He... Because he, he did it with Damien Wayne as well. So sim, similar. Like, he has a version of the Lazarus Pits. Hmm. Kind of, or at least the same sort of plot device where it's like... Yeah, I can bring someone back, but they to, go a bit to mental. Be, to be fair, like, the film's their own thing, they can do whatever the fuck they want. Like, it, it, I mean, they could use that, and even if it wasn't a thing, it, it can be a thing now. Yeah. For the sake of plot. So. But some Doomsday would have to abduct the body of Superman. I suppose there could be some value to, like, a crypto... Sense. Yes. Yeah. There could be some value to, like, a, um, a Kryptonian body might have, like... Special skin cells or something. Who the fuck knows? Yeah. But I mean... We don't. <laughs> yeah. I mean, again, I was basing that mainly on Superman being abducted. Yeah. In the uh, Justice League origin story. I think that pretty much wraps everything up. Oh, okay. <laughs> Can, is there anything more? That, um, I can't think of much more to add on. Just no, on... Not really, but I know as soon as this ends, I'll remember all the valid points I was going to make. Well, we'll bring those up next time. Sure, why the fuck? So, this has been our first uh, Bear Sleeve podcast um, Patman versus Super Rob. Actually, like, sorry to just interrupt you again. I, it seems like a good question, but if you. Well, I recommend one Batman story, one Superman story, just for the sake of shits and giggles. For the sake of shits and giggles, let's do it. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go Superman for tomorrow. Um, it's Jim Lee on the art. I don't know who's on, in the writing. I think it's Jim Lee in the art. It's the same, people, the same one that did Hush. So uh, Jim Jeff, Lee? Yeah, Jim Lee. Yeah. So Jeff Lowe that wrote it as well. You know. uh, I don't know for certain, so I'm not going to say. To be fair enough. But, uh, yeah, but, yeah, so for tomorrow, which is um, a great story, Superman... Uh, it opens up, Superman goes to a priest and tells the priest that he's going to commit suicide. And then it goes in from there. 
and it's a wild ride. Really, really interesting. Uh, fun, like, delve into Superman's soul. Um, a Batman story to recommend. I'm going to go with Batman Noel. Oh, I was going to pick that. Um, <laughs> it's a Christmas story, which is a bit weird, and it's a retelling of a Christmas Carol uh, through the eye of Batman. It's all done by Lee Bermicello. I want to say it's Bermicello. Again, my pronunciation might not be great. Um, but basically... It's a, it's a tour de force from Lee, and you just you just need to read it. It's fantastic. It looks through the lens of Christmas Carol, right at the Dark Knight, and his relationships with a lot of his background cast. Over to you. Nice. Some solid recommendations. Shit. Um, I have to try and pick something as good. Um, <laughs> now, for Superman, I'd pick... I mean, obviously, I, I, I love... Superman American Alien that we've already mentioned in the show, but I other than that I'd probably go with All Star Superman, which is Grant Morrison writing. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, it is. That's when we get cancer into. Oh. Yeah, but he's it, it, led to believe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just say yeah, yeah. Um, no idea who did the art. Probably like actually no, I want to say like, it's probably. It's, like, it's the guy who's doing Jupiter Circle now, isn't it? For Mark Miller. My, I would just instantly say Frank Quietly. Yeah, same every, guy. Because they're like the, they're like a team. Isn't he the duty what also works in New X Men? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it's him. Yeah. I'll, I'll say it's them. For yeah, now, but I know it's definitely Morrison. Yeah. Uh, Batman. My mind has gone blank. Are you gonna go with Morrison as well? No. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Uh, Snyder. I mean, this goes against everything I've ever, <laughs> ever said, and I know that I'm never going to live this down, but fuck it, I'll recommend Batman Court of Owls by Scott Snyder, because I've recently come to appreciate that story and its art, which is, uh, um, yeah, like I said, S Scott Snyder writes it, and Greg Capello, yep. is that how you pronounce it? Capello, Capello? Capullo? Yeah, sure, <laughs> Greg. Greg! 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 Greg C. Uh, <laughs> Greg, you see in the house! There's the uh, illustrations on it, and the illustrations I personally think are friggin' gorgeous, especially when it comes down to fight scenes and stuff. Yeah, he's got uh, a really nice, like, heard rhythm. I heard yes. in an interview recently, actually, that uh, like Capello knows his shit when it comes to martial arts, which is why he might be, you know, why the uh, fight scenes always look really dynamic. Um, and yeah. And just for the sake of you not ripping the shit out of me for picking that, because yeah, yeah, I would probably also pick um, <laughs> um, fuck, I can't actually think of anything with Batman now. Tag me in, tag me in. No, oh, I must do this alone. Fuck it, I'll tag him in because it's basically so okay. silent. Okay. <laughs> um, Grant Morrison, Arkham Asylum. I didn't want to pick that. <laughs> it's this. Actually, like... fuck, Dave McKean's art. Yeah. Yeah, fuck it. Um, so, Batman is called up by the Joker. Um, the inmates the inmates have taken over the asylum. Shut your mouth. Uh, <laughs> the inmates have taken over the asylum, and Batman um, is told that no inmate, uh, none of the staff will get hurt as long as Batman goes and spends one night in the asylum with Joker. And then it turns into like this amazing odyssey through um, Batman and his rogues gallery. Alice in Wonderland. Like, it references that a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. If I remember right. Cool, I don't know why I called it. Because my hat. So, yeah. Yeah. But, um, okay. yeah, the, the one that I was going to pick, because originally I was going to go with Dark Returns, but it was too obvious. <laughs> as much as I love that story. Year One? But, I always forget Year One exists. <laughs> like, that's a really bad thing to say. But, no, uh, fuck, I've forgotten. No, I remember again. Sorry. Uh, Alan Moore's Killing Joke. Yes. Fantastic. Fantastic. Because um, on a bad choice. day, anyone can be pushed to be a bit batshit mental. That's not the direct Butchering quote. Butchering it. But yeah. That, that's not the direct quote. I can't remember it. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> bring it all to a close. Um, this has been Patman Pat and... Super Rob. And uh, this is the Bear Sleep Podcast. Please come back next week when we'll be doing another one of these bad boys. And I think we will have a special guest. Ooh. See ya.